model of equilibrium. Modgelini Miller had developed a lot of capital structure related models. We expect that you are aware of these models. These models were developed with respect to the value of a levered and the value of the unlevered. A levered company is the one which has debt and equity. Unlevered is the one with only equity. So he proved that under no tax scenario, value of levered is equal to value of unlevered. Under corporate tax scenario, since interest on debt is a tax deductible expense, value of levered is equal to value of unlevered plus the tax shield. Now we'll talk about Miller's model of equilibrium. RD is the rate of return on debt. TD is a personal tax rate on debt. TE is a personal tax rate on equity. RE is a rate of return on equity. Now, we are aware that we are operating in the world of corporate and personal taxes. And we know that it, companies want to issue debt because they can save tax as interest on debt is a tax deductible expense. Now, companies are motivated to raise debt. But since in the economy generally, Personal tax rate on income on debt income is high that is the interest are taxed generally at a higher rate and personal tax rate on equity income is very low or at some countries it is zero like capital gain tax are not charged. So investors are motivated to come up with equity product they want to buy equity product and companies want to raise debt. So who will buy debt? the investors who are under the exempt category. So tax exempt investor will buy debt. So let's say if the company gives the tax rate at 10%. Okay. Now, investors who are tax exempt get 10% of the income in their hand. But investors who, debt investors who have to pay tax, for them, they will get in their hand RD1 minus TD. Let's say TD rate is 20%. So RD 10, 1 minus 0.20. So in hand, they get just 8%. Now they are not motivated to come up and invest in the debt product. So the companies, in order to induce the tax paying investor to come up and take their debt, it wants to raise the debt rate in such a way that it should be equal to the tax exempt investors. So RD 1 minus TD. I should increase this RD in such a way that it should be equal to the RD of the tax exempt investors which is 10. So RD should be equal to 10 upon 1 minus TD. Okay. Now RD is equal to 10 upon 1 minus TD which is 0 0.20. So 0 0.8 which gives me 12.5. So the companies need to give the tax paying investors a rate of 12.5. Then only they will get in hand 10%. So will the company keep on increasing the interest rates? End of the day it is a burden to them, right? So how much will the interest rate be kept? How much will the companies keep on rising the interest rate? It will be up to a point where their tax savings are there. Once the tax savings get offset because of this personal loss, they will stop rising the interest rate. So generally as the interest rates of in the debt are progressive, okay, that means the company has to keep on rising the rate of debt in order to motivate the investors. So company will keep rising the interest rate on debt up to a point this 10, 1 minus TC, okay, this personal tax rate, personal tax rate on debt, that is TD becomes equal to the corporate tax rate, tax rate, corporate tax rate okay that is TC so till the time TD is equal to TC the company will keep raising the interest rate so Miller said that at this point the demand for the debt 
will stop because the savings on the company part is getting reduced. Now they are not getting any savings out of taxation. So it will stop this level is called a Miller's equilibrium. Now in this case we compared between the RD with respect to the tax exempt investors. Now let us see RD with the equity holders. Now look from the company point of view. We are again in the same setting of corporate and personal tax. Now look from the company point of view. It is corporate, corporates find it advantageous to issue debt till the extent RD1 minus TC is less than RE. RD1 minus TC is the effective cost of debt. RD is a written to the debt holders, it's a cost to me, right? So since I save this cost because of the taxation effect, so RD1 minus TC is an effective cost of debt for me. Till the extent this cost is less than the RE, that is a return on equity of the equity shareholders, I will be motivated to issue debt, right? But look from investors point of view, which investors? Debt holders, okay? For them, the effective return on debt is RD1 minus TD, correct? This is the return in the hand of the debt holders. If 10 12 and a half company is giving 1 minus the corp, uh, personal tax rate, they get 10% in hand. But till the extent RD1 minus TD is weakly greater than or at least equal to RE1 minus TE, investors will be willing to invest in debt product. Now generally as we said, TE is zero in the economy because dividends are uh, generally not taxed in many countries and even the capital gain tax is zero if you sell after one year. Okay, so that's why TE becomes zero and even the Miller's theorem assumes TE to be zero. So investors will be, investors means debt holders will be ready to Invest in debt till RD1 minus TD is greater than or equal to RE1 minus TE. Since TE is 0, I can write RE only. Okay. Now, in order to equate it, RD1 minus TD equal to RE. So, the companies will keep rising, raising the interest on debt till the extent RD is equal to RE1 minus TD. Correct? So, but at this point, investors, debt holders want that they should get in hand at least equal to the equity holders. So, this is the rate of interest that debt holders want. But will the company keep raising the rate of interest of the debt holders who are general tax paying debt holders? I am comparing it this with now equity holders. Okay? Now, it will keep raising the interest rate up to a point where the benefit which is out of the taxation savings equalizes the personal tax loss. So, when this becomes RE1 minus TC, I will stop issuing debt because now it is no more advantageous to issue debt because the rate of return on debt is indifferent with the rate of return on equity. So the company is now saying it's same costly to me to issue debt or equity. So we say the equilibrium is achieved and the tax advantage is zero where 1 minus TD minus one is, has become equal to 1 minus TC into 1 minus TE. So if you remember our corporate and personal tax scenario where value of levered was value of unlevered plus the whole big equation multiplied by D where this part was a tax advantage that is 1 minus TD minus 1 minus TC into 1 minus TE. So if this was not is no more a positive number they both are equal so 1 minus 1 is 0. So when we see there is no tax advantage between this 1 minus TD minus 1 minus this becomes 0. Let's say this is 1 this is 1 this becomes 0 so this whole equation will become 0. 
and so value of levered is equal to unlevered i am not finding any additional value by being a debt oriented company so i will stop issuing debt so finally we said the miller's equilibrium says that the companies will keep issuing the debt till the extent the personal tax rates of debt in the eco economy equals the personal tax rate of the corporates for more details on finance topics you can contact palak rajani at yahoo.com thank you